Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, February 19th, 2015, and here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, Ron Paul says the U.S. youth been lauded as an excuse to invade other countries. And the origins of ISIS explained. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And don't tell me that I'm a weirdo because I'm upset about this. I'm just sick of dishonorable trash. Supreme Cobra Commander! You're failures! You think I'd sell my family out like you did back? Well, former senator and presidential candidate Ron Paul is once again making headlines, this time for his recent comments regarding the U.S. government's response, or lack thereof, to the September 11th terror attacks back in 2001. Ron Paul said in a radio interview published by BuzzFeed that the United States used bin Laden as an excuse to build up its military and invade other countries. They knew where bin Laden was. I don't think they really wanted to catch him because he was used as the excuse for us, uh, you know, invading various countries and building up the military. Well, you can't argue with that. I definitely agree with what Ron Paul said right there. And don't forget that there's been all kinds of whistleblowers and insiders who have come forward and said that Osama bin Laden was already dead. And we're talking a long time ago, way before the U.S. government claimed to have raided the bin Laden compound and killed him back in 2011. That was a total fabrication. Don't believe the hype. I mean, think about it. The number one international terrorist in the world He's captured and killed, yet there are no photographs of his body proving that he's dead. And for some unexplained reason, they actually tossed his body into the ocean. I mean, it makes no sense. And we're not the only ones who find this suspicious. Seymour Hirsch, for example, the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, said the raid which killed Osama bin Laden in 2011 is one big lie. He also said that the mainstream media in the U.S. is pathetic for failing to challenge the White House about the bin Laden raid. Well, you, you can say that again. We also heard from Dr. Steve Pachinik. He's a frequent guest on The Alex Jones Show. Pachinik says that bin Laden died in 2001, and the U.S. government was waiting for the most politically expedient time to roll out the corpse. And this guy should know. I mean, he actually met bin Laden and worked with him during the proxy war against the Soviets in Afghanistan back in the early 1980s. Steve Pachinik, a former U.S. Navy captain, was the deputy assistant secretary of state under three different administrations, Nixon, Ford, and Carter. He also worked for the Reagan administration and Bush Sr., and he still works as a consultant for the Department of Defense. So he's not some crazy conspiracy theorist or internet blogger that uh, lives in his mother's basement. No, this guy is the real deal. Ever seen the movie Patriot Games starring Harrison Ford? Well, he plays the character of Jack Ryan from the popular Tom Clancy novels. Tom Clancy based the character of Jack Ryan off of Steve Pachinik. He's an expert in psychological warfare, counterterrorism, plus hostage rescue. He's the real life Jack Ryan, and he says the bin Laden raid was bullshit. According to Pachinik, bin Laden was a dead man back in 2001, even before the United States invaded Afghanistan. Of course, they, we needed a, a boogeyman as an excuse, like Ron Paul said, to invade other countries. And speaking of other countries, Iran says that the bin Laden raid was staged. That's right, they've gone public. That doesn't mean I trust the Iranian government, but in this case, I do agree with their analysis. The Iranian intelligence minister said they can prove that bin Laden was dead before the raid. They have documents that prove it. And they ask, if the U.S. military and intelligence apparatus have really arrested or killed bin Laden, why don't they show his body? Why have they thrown his corpse into the sea? Well, that's a damn good question. And why weren't the pictures ever released to the American public? I mean, supposedly, U.S. Special Forces had like 50-plus pictures 
of Osama bin Laden's dead, rotten corpse that were taken well after he was killed and before they tossed him into the ocean. But yet those pictures remain classified and top secret. And guess what? We're never gonna see them. The Department of Justice was ordered to destroy the bin Laden death photos just hours after they received a FOIA request to release them. That's right, U.S. Special Operations Commander Admiral William McRaven ordered his subordinates to destroy photos showing the corpse of Osama bin Laden just hours after a FOIA lawsuit seeking the documents was filed in the United States Court for the District of Columbia. So the Pentagon, in a desperate move to keep the pictures out of the public domain, destroyed all the pictures. And uh, I, I sure would have loved to have seen them. I think they were fake, but I would have loved to have seen them anyway. And I'd like to get Biggs' take on all this. I mean, Biggs, doesn't it sound a little suspicious to you? I mean, here we got Doug Stanhope, the comedian, I think he said it best. The United States, they had the Bigfoot of terrorists, right? They capture the guy but yet they take no pictures of him or they don't release the pictures to the public and they dump his body in the ocean. Is that suspicious? What's your I mean, take? Not only that, I mean, the president is in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, he's so supportive of Islam in every kind of way. He's afraid to say Islam extremists. He's afraid to say all this stuff because he keeps tiptoeing around the fact that these guys are out of control, the radicals. So I find it hard to believe that the president then wants to take the body and throw it in the ocean, which goes against everything in Islam when it comes to burial. I did some research on it, and what they're supposed to do is dig a hole deep enough to where the smell cannot reach the earth, and predators will not go in and smell the bodies and go and dig it up. So throwing a body in the ocean goes against everything that Muslims believe in, and this coming from a president who's this huge Muslim sympathizer, <laughs> I just find that fishy as well. Well, I also think it's fishy that, it, look, if they release the pictures um, Barack Obama would have been a, a hero, even more so. I mean, his popularity obviously rose quite a bit after they supposedly killed bin Laden. But if they would have released the pictures, man, I tell you what, the cult of Obama, their fans would have loved it. And I think he would have got tremendous support from the public. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. And then another thing, we have Putin now saying that he has information that 9-11 was an inside job. And, you know, it makes you think, you know, if you have that kind of information about your enemy, you know, Russia, U.S., we've always kind of had, uh, you know, problems. you think that he would release the information about 9-11. But then I started thinking, too, at the same time we were speaking earlier, that would almost empower Americans to rise up, revolt. There would be a revolution against the government because so many people have bought into the narrative that, you know, that Osama bin Laden, you know, did this entire 9-11 attack all by himself. And, you know, these guys flew the planes into the towers and, you know, it caught us off guard, but you know, too many coincidences happen in one day for something like that just to have happened one-sided. Both parties knew about this and allowed it to happen. And of course, uh, we all believe that there was Saudi Arabian involvement and we'll never know for sure until they release the 28 pages. And I'm sure you're all aware of what happened to the Navy SEALs after the bin Laden raid. 30 Americans were killed in a crash on August 6, 2011, when insurgents shot down a U.S. military helicopter in eastern Afghanistan. 22 of the victims belonged to the same unit as the Navy SEALs team involved in the bin Laden raid. Now, the family members of the Navy SEALs want answers, and they say the Obama administration is hiding something. Guys from SEAL Team 6. Uh, their families suggest that the White House and others are lying about their deaths and what led to them. As soon as uh, Joe Biden announced that it was a SEAL team who took out bin Laden, within 24 hours, my son called me. His tone was extraordinarily serious. He said, you need to wipe your social media clean. I mean, you need to get everything off of it now. And I said, of course, son, I will. What's wrong? And he said, mom, there's chatter and your life is in danger. Our lives are in danger. Now, I want to make it clear, according to U.S. military officials, none of the guys who died in that helicopter crash were part of the Navy SEAL team raid on the bin Laden compound. Uh, that's according to U.S. Uh, officials. Yet we have sources that say otherwise, so believe who you want to believe. But it is true that many of the victims' families say the Obama administration was at least partially responsible 
for that deadly crash, in my opinion, to silence them for good. And now that bin Laden is officially dead and the good guys have killed him, well, we still need to have a boogeyman as an excuse, like Ron Paul was saying, as an excuse to invade other countries. Now, don't get me wrong, radical Islam is real, and they are a true and present danger to our country. But we still need to have a boogeyman as an excuse to go into other countries. And you got to ask yourself, who organized and created these terrorist organizations to begin with? Who's funding them? Who's training them? And who's letting them loose to wreak havoc on the grand chessboard? When they used the radical Islamists with Saudi Arabian funding in 1979 under Zbigniew Brzezinski's plan to launch wars, not just in Afghanistan, but areas bordering Afghanistan to the north and to the west, forcing the Russians to come in to respond. That was a trap. So they didn't totally control the jihadis. They were funding them, they were arming them, and then later they were supposedly blowback on 9-11, but the door was opened. And Saudi Arabia was there running the operation, the 28 pages. Senator Graham of the 9-11 Commission has gone public. And I've talked to Walter Jones, a congressman. He's gone public. And Colonel Schaefer and everybody else, okay? So I was right again, period. So I'm gonna explain this to you. It isn't just black or white where it's either 100% run or it is 100% run. Four and a half years ago, a program was launched in Libya, in Syria, and Egypt, and a bunch of other places to overthrow the governments and put radicals in. Obama and other Soros-connected groups even above the CIA. They do this even outside government. This stuff's so criminal. Went in... And with Google Analytics and with Facebook behind it, they all met the same place Bilderberg met a few years ago. They met there a few years before that. Uh, they're north of London. This has all been publicly released and funded the Arab Spring where they get the students and everybody out the street. But then the radicals use that once they take over to coup d'etat the coup. And then now you have an Islamic state over Libya, over Saudi Arabia, which is already quarterbacking it, uh, over Syria, over Egypt. So, there's Wesley Clark. We have it on screen. Libya and Syria, the neocon plan to attack seven countries in five years using destabilization. Once you destabilize, you then have an excuse to come in and bomb the very groups you turned loose to begin with. So, Obama is acting like he's a moderate and that he's only fighting, you know, some of the radicals because, you know, he loves Islam so much. The truth is... They're doing limited airstrikes on different disparate rebel groups that are in there battling for control of Syria that the West opened the door for to get them buggy whipped into line so that then they can be forged into a new army to go in and take out Syria. And the excuse will be because of the Syrian civil war that gave ISIS a home base, that gave Al Qaeda a home base. And so now we've got to go in and clean out the whole country. It's Assad's fault. We've already heard this. You're going to hear it again. That's why they're saying, oh, we're there with rebels now, calling in airstrikes and giving them weapons with billions of dollars of funding that Congress has passed in three different spending packages the last four or five months. Billions of dollars. And it's in the Wall Street Journal that, well, the good rebels are being given vehicles, and they're allowed to launch attacks. And then you'll see these very vehicles in a month flying ISIS flags, and no one will go, wait a minute, we gave them that. Or, or they might say, oh, yeah, ISIS captured it. Just like they captured Iraqi bases full of artillery and new weapons and RPGs, like the Marines and the Army just left those weapons caches in bases and didn't defend them or didn't have self-destruct bombs, didn't have detonators already placed to blow up ammo dumps. They let them have it. All they need is the plausible deniability, just like Benghazi and the heat-seeking missiles, the anti-aircraft surface-to-air missiles.